It's a big night in Toronto as fans prepare for Game 1 of the ALCS between the Jays and Cleveland. I'm here to be as unpopular as can be so that people can come forward After say, a pro-life hey, protest was held at Humber College, students expressed outrage. And Category 4 Hurricane Nicole slams Bermuda. The hurricane is the strongest to hit in 13 years. Hi and welcome to Humber News. I'm Helena Schlapek coming to you from our newsroom here at Humber College North Campus. We have some breaking news from British Columbia. Jim Prentice, former Alberta Premier, has been killed in a plane crash. Four people died when a twin-engine Cessna crashed shortly after takeoff from Kelowna. The Transportation Safety Board says the plane disappeared from radar soon after takeoff. It described the crash as unsurvivable. The plane was headed to Springbank Airport outside of Calgary. More news today about high suicide rates on the First Nation reserves. In the past four days, three girls under the age of 14 have taken their own lives in northern Saskatchewan. Two girls were from Stan Stanley Mission Reserve and one from Lac La Ronge. According to Health Canada, one out of five Indigenous people reported suicidal thoughts. In other news, it's the night Blue Jays fans have been waiting for for a whole year. A return to the American League Championship Series with Cleveland. Marco Estrada will be starting pitcher for the Jays in Game 1 while Cleveland will counter with Corey Kluber. Each team swept its respective division series. It was this day in 2015 that the infamous bat flip by Jose Pautista became an internet sensation. Students are gearing up for one big game tonight. Our reporters hit the halls to find out how you're going to celebrate the evening. Chris Besick has the story. Toronto Blue Jays have made it to the ALCS. Humber students have been supporting Toronto by sporting Jays attire all day. Paralegal student Gabriel Da Silva has been a fan since he was a kid. He will be watching tonight with family and friends. Da Silva has been enthusiastic about the team's performance so far. Our bats are like, we're hitting, we're hitting the ball well right now. Our pitching has been pretty like good throughout the season and they're still like doing this, this thing. But it's good that like we're actually hitting the ball the way we're supposed to be like now. So hopefully we can keep that groove going into this second round. Electrical engineering student and longtime Jays fan Eric Herrera will be watching the game tonight at a bar with friends. I feel like this year they they're more weathered. They they know where where they're at. They, the last game, the last season uh, series was a sweep. So I can just imagine how uh, competitive it'll be this uh, this time. Around. I'm really excited to see them tonight and uh, hopefully they win. The Toronto Blue Jays and Cleveland Indians face off for the first game tonight of the AOCS. This is the second time since 1993 that the Blue Jays have been in the championship series. Chris Besick, Humber News. More fallout today from a pro-life demonstration that took place this week at Humber College's North Campus. The graphic protest from the Canadian Centre for Bioethical Reform left many students uncomfortable and disgusted and Humber is reviewing the way it handled the demonstrations and how to improve for the future. We get all the details from Tyler Bloomfield. Demonstrators brought large posters and pamphlets to hand out to students walking by. And while the protests appeared peaceful on the surface, students and staff were shocked. The graphic images of the dismembered fetuses started right here and continued all the way along this hallway to the bookstore, which left many students like Claire Jackson triggered with an emotional response. I got extremely aggravated, um, very uncomfortable, anxious. Uh, it almost made me tear up. Um, and I didn't, uh, I was very worried about some of the other girls in the school. It was very disturbing to me for, to see pictures that blown up. What feelings did that Students took to Twitter to voice their opinion. Seriously disgusted that they're allowing anti-abortion posters in LRC right now. That's not right. Thanks for making so many students upset. They could get their message across without being so graphic, disgusted by this. It's horrible that you let that be. What about the people who this triggers their PTSD? I have many friends who are horrified. I was very disappointed in Humber. There was no knowledge to me. There wasn't uh, on my blackboard. I would have appreciated that. That's my main go-to. Or posted um, an email. I would have liked to have gotten an email about it just so I can be aware of how to uh, approach the situation when I do come to school. Here's the letter that went out the morning of the demonstration, despite them knowing days ahead. We considered a number of options and given the, uh, some of the discussion we'd had with the group and the overall uh, activity on campus, 
is a fair balance to what we could do. Okay, what were some of the options? That was the primary option. Senior Humber administrators say they're learning from this demonstration and preparing for the next one. You know, based now that we've had the event, the first one occur, and we sort of get what they're all about and what they're doing, it gives us an opportunity to think, hmm, maybe there's a way to do this a little bit differently. And so that's what we're going to be looking to do. Humber College was not the first campus that CCBR visited, and they said they have plans to return in the future. Tyler Bloomfield, Humber News. Turkish media says 30 people have been killed by a car bombing close to the Turkish-Syrian border. Dozens of victims are in hospital with serious injuries. The attack took place at a Syrian rebel checkpoint. At least 14 of the dead are believed to be rebel fighters. Officials say that the number of deaths is expected to rise because of the severity of the injuries. Turkish media are blaming the military group ISIS for the attack. Elsewhere in Syria, airstrikes continue to rock rebel-held neighborhoods in Aleppo. More than 100 people have been killed by Russian and Syrian mil missiles over the past three days. Cleanup crews are hard at work in Bermuda after Hurricane Nicole ripped through the island yesterday. Nicole plowed through homes and businesses, knocking out power. The damage was, brought, was widespread. However, there were no severe injuries or fatalities. The Category 3 storm is the worst to reach the area in more than a decade. It comes just a week after Hurricane Matthew tore through Haiti. Thousands of mourners turned out today to pay their respects to the King of Thailand. The longest reigning monarch in the world died yesterday. A royal procession wound its way through the streets of Bangkok. People gathered in thousands to say goodbye. Pomi Paul Adulia Day died yesterday at the age of 88 from health complications. He was seen as a stabilizing figure in a country hit by political turmoil and military coups. He was revered by many as Sevin Divine. The government has declared the country will be in state of mourning for a full year. South of the border, we're just over three weeks away from the U.S. presidential election. Recently leaked audio from 2005 of Donald Trump making derogatory comments against women has sent shockwaves through the United States. Michelle Obama spoke at a campaign rally for Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire today, yesterday, ahead of next, week's, Wednesday, next Wednesday's final presidential debate. The First Lady told the audience she was shaken to her core after hearing the tape. I'd love nothing more than to pretend like this isn't happening and to come out here and do my normal campaign speech. It would be dishonest and disingenuous to me to just move on to the next thing like this was all just a bad dream. This is not something that we can ignore. It's not something we can just sweep under the rug as just another disturbing footnote in a sad election season. And to make matters worse, <laughs> it now seems very clear that this isn't an isolated incident. It's one of countless examples of how he has treated women his whole life. And I have to tell you that I listen to all of this and I feel it so personally. And I'm sure that many of you do too, particularly the women. The shameful comments about our bodies, the disrespect of our ambitions and intellect, the belief that you can do anything you want to a woman, it is cruel, it's, it's frightening. And the truth is, it hurts, it, it, it hurts. This next story isn't for the faint of heart. If you're afraid of heights, you might want to look away. It's the fifth Wingsuit Flying World Championship and 16 athletes aren't just sizing up the competition, but the mountain as well. Once they're ready, they take the 1500 meter plunge at blinding speeds. The athletes cover the whole length of the valley between the mountain, all vying for a spot in the quarterfinals. It seems there's another gorilla stealing the show and Harambe might have to share the spotlight. Kambuka escaped his den on Thursday evening. Some visitors, locked in, some visitors locked in for their own safety. The zoo says he was tranquilized and returned to his enclosure today. How Kambuka escaped is still a mystery, but visitors aren't deterred from visiting. Speaking of light, people in northern Finland have been treated to a very special light show. The northern lights have made a spectacular appearance dancing across Finland skies. The phenomenon is difficult to predict. Some experts say we're more likely to see the lights around March and September equinox because of the increased solar activity. Whenever we get to see them, it's always an enchanting sight.